ndio pia waweze kupata riziki I want to confirm to the commissioners and our development partners that our president is very committed to the cleaning up of this river every day he asks me the progress so i am well aware of where he places the importance of this exercise and i urge all of you to work with commitment and hard work nikimalizia vile waziri wetu mkuu amesema sisi huyu rais wetu ametuambia na tumekubali kwa sababu ndio kiongozi wetu ya kwamba hii Kenya yote ni yetu wale wote ambaye walimpigia kura wale hawakumpigia wote ni wa Kenya na atawafanyia kazi na yeye akiwa kiongozi wa nchi ataendelea hiyo kazi na mimi nikiwa kiongozi wa UDA naendelea kushughulikia watu ya UDA naye rais anashughulikia watu ya Kenya Your Excellency tukiwa hapa tunataka tuseme tumesema tukiwa pale Kericho na tunarudia kazi ya maendeleo itafanyika kila pahali Jamhuri ya Kenya hapa Korogocho juzi tulikuwa Nyanza mipango ya maendeleo kwa sababu kila mkenya analipa kodi lakini wale wafanyikazi wa kumsaidia rais atatafuta wale ambaye wanakubali na kuamini the bottom up economic transformation agenda kwa sababu ndio wanaelewa ajenda yake kwa sababu lazima utapata wale viongozi wale wa kukusaidia ni wale wanaelewa ajenda yako ndio uweze kupata progress katika kazi ya Kenya kwa hivyo watu ya Korogocho tutakuwa hapa mimi mwenyewe nitakuja kuhakikisha ya kwamba mumepewa kazi kwa hii mto ndio kila Saturday mnapata pesa ya kujisaidia tumekubaliana tumekubaliana kwa hayo mengi ningetaka kwa heshima kubwa nimuulize msimame tumukaribishe rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya mheshimiwa William Samoe Ruto mheshimiwa rais aya korogosho wa mjambo korogosho wa mjambo mambo Wanajeshi wasifiwe. Asanteni tuketi chini. Wale tulio na viti. Asanteni sana. Mheshimiwa Deputy President, waheshimiwa mawaziri, mheshimiwa governor wetu wa jiji la Nairobi, our friends from UNEP, from UN, from UNDP and all the other partners present here, distinguished guests, the great people of Korogosho. We gather here today to affirm that we have embarked on a journey and there will be no turning back. I am grateful to our special guests and esteemed visitors who are here to bear witness to this historic moment. For far too long, the city of Nairobi has fallen into a state of shameful, hazardous, and unpleasant state of environmental and sanitary neglect. Runaway air, water, land, and even noise pollution have been so normalized that there are people who have never seen the green, clean, healthy, and safe city in the sun that Nairobi used to be. In other words, commitment to the integrity of the environment is a central feature of political, economic, social, and cultural life in our nation. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda fully recognizes that shared prosperity is guaranteed in our time as so long as it is driven by clean green growth. This means that we shall be custodians of the environment in recognition of our generation's twin obligations as heirs of the generation that came before us 
and as trustees for posterity. The responsible stewardship of the environment agenda is a matter of intergenerational justice and we shall not be a generation so reckless as to pursue a scorch earth policy in our quest for prosperity. This commitment is particularly relevant at a time when climate change has subjected the earth to unprecedented temperature increase, leading to rising sea levels, flooding and drought of huge intensity and for long duration. Our obligation to respect, uphold and defend the Constitution entails the full observance of our duties in respect to the environment. The measure of this commitment can only be the entrenchment of our agenda for clean green growth, the restoration of degraded landscapes and ecosystems, including forests and river basins. Mountains of rotting garbage, innumerable kinds of harmful refuse dumped in rivers and streams, and dust and smoke have over time become the defining characteristics of Nairobi in particular and urbanization in Kenya in general. This state of affairs has led to various undesirable developments. The centralization of heavy metals and assorted toxins in the soil, air and water has reached dangerous levels, putting the well-being of residents in great Geobody. The story of the governor of Makueni tells it all. Nothing symbolizes the regrettable environmental degradation in our city better than Nairobi rivers, which have become channels of murky and toxic streams and not the fresh, clear, cool waters. Once the rivers, once the rivers are found with variety of aquatic life, that is non-existent today. To put Nairobi and its river basin's ecologically crisis in perspective, let us recall that the city is an anglicized pronunciation of Enkare Nyarobe, which is a Kimasai means, which in Kimasai means the river of cool waters. For the Maasai, a famous pastoral community this name was not only a fair description, but also high praise for a river basin where Morans watered their hearts and flocked with absolute confidence that pollution and toxicity were non-existent. Today, no one, not even the most reckless among us, can dare so much as taste the water in any stream in Nairobi River system. It is discolored smelly, often corrosive, and toxic. This state of affairs must come to an end, and the unsafe and unhealthy environmental situation must be corrected to restore Nairobi to its true identity. We have resolved that the city must not only reclaim its glorious reputation as Africa's green city in the sun, but also live up to its ancestral identity as the river of cool, fresh, and safe waters. This commitment is emphatic and unambiguous. Kenya's national development blueprint is categorical that the shared prosperity we must pursue has to be attained in a clean and secure environment. The preamble to our Constitution has made it clear that a shared consciousness of our respect for the environment is our heritage and collective determination to sustain it for the benefit of future generations. For this reason, the right of every person to a clean and healthy environment is affirmed. Article 42 of our Constitution gives the right to protect the environment for the benefit of the present and future generations, and also to have environmental obligations. A few weeks ago, I presided over the commencement of activities to restore the Ngong Forest Complex, 
which is the source of many rivers that form the Nairobi Rivers Basin. Our national program to plant 15 billion trees by 2032 will restore many river sources and catchment areas. The work we are inaugurating today advances this restoration and rehabilitation agenda so that the water flowing in our rivers may begin to support a profusion of aquatic life again. This portion of the cleaning and greening campaign is of special personal significance to me. My research project for my master's degree documented significant changes in water quality due to pollution of the wetlands in Nairobi National Park. I therefore recommended conservation measures to bring pollution under control in my thesis. A number of stakeholders have worked hard over the years to do precisely this work. From 2000, UNEP undertook the Nairobi River Basin project. In 2019, UNEP again collaborated with the Rotary Club under the Adopt a River initiative, which is still going on. Likewise, the UN Habitat, in collaboration with the government, undertook the Nairobi River Regeneration Initiative. Finally, the National Environmental Management Authority has been implementing the Upper Rivers Regeneration Program since 2019. Despite this commendable work, the Nairobi River Basin ecosystem has not regenerated sufficiently to sustain aquatic life, and much work remains to be done to turn murky streams into rivers of cool water. The Nairobi Rivers Commission represents a fresh, resolute, and substantive effort to supplement, complement, catalyze, and accelerate all previous efforts to enable Nairobi Liba to the promise of its name and recapture its reputation as the clean, green city in the sun. As things stand today, we all know that Nairobi is the city in the garbage. The Commission is inclusive, participatory, and collaborative, and represents collective action on a major scale and with representation from various multi-stakeholder groups. And I want to ask uh, my deputy to include representatives from the county of Machakos and the county of Makueni, so that they too can make input into this great program, either as co-opted members or members in whatever other form, to make sure that this project is cross-county, as uh, the governor has said earlier. The Commission also has an advisory group made up of UN Habitat, UNEP, World Resources Institute, development partners, and private sector organizations. With this new impetus, the aspiration to make Nairobi Rivers Basin viable and the water clean is virtually guaranteed to happen very rapidly. The people of Nairobi are finally able to give themselves, hopefully, clean rivers. And I want to uh, commend my deputy who has been on top of this program, and I specifically assigned him this responsibility because we want the whole of government, the whole of society, the whole of community involved in this process because it's the only way we can get this done. Let me also um, reiterate that the project we are beginning in Semeko Kiswahili, I Mpango ya Nairobi Rivers Commission, Kwanza nataka ni wapongeze vijana wengi sehemu nyingi katika mji wetu wa Nairobi kwa ile kazi tayari wanafanya kusafisha mito yetu ya Nairobi ile takataka wanaokota na ile kazi yote wanafanya ili kufanya mji wetu wa Nairobi iwe ni mji msafi mimi nataka niwaeleze wote ya kwamba tutafanya kazi pamoja na nyinyi This commission, 
as I have said, has not come to replace any stakeholder who is doing something at the moment about the cleaning, the cleaning and greening of our city. But we have come to complement. We have come to collaborate. We have come to accelerate so that we can achieve this in a shorter time by involving everybody. Let me also say, for the avoidance of doubt, that the government of Kenya under the Ministry of Environment is partnering with the county of Nairobi so that we can hire 12,770 young people and women in Nairobi City. From the 15th of next month, they are going to participate in the cleaning and greening and especially growing trees in the city of Nairobi. We are partnering because we believe that this is an all-of-government program that involves both the national and the county government. The governor, the senator, the women rep, all members of parliament, all members of county assembly will participate in ensuring that at least 150 young people and women in every ward are identified for this assignment so that we can work together going into the future. Let me also assure you that those who are currently 